Hello and welcome to Lawbeck Luxury Cars. I'm Harry and on this edition of the Friday Drive, we've got G-Wagons, G-Wagons and G-Wagons. Now, as you can probably tell at the moment, we're beginning riding to G-Wagons. Here we've got our 2015 G63 AMG, our 2012 G350 Bluetech, of course. But for this edition of the Friday Drive, we're gonna drive what I think is our most interesting G-Wagon, and it's this one, our 2012 G55 AMG. Now, if you live on the east coast of Australia, particularly Melbourne and Sydney, you'd have to have been living under a rock to not have noticed these mammoth Mercedes. They're absolutely everywhere. So what's all the fuss about and why do I think that this is the most interesting G-Wagon? Well, it all comes down to what's under the bonnet here. See, what you'll find is, if I can find a little doohickey, a five and a half litre supercharged V8. Now this is the same engine that you'd find in a CLK DTM and the same engine or a derivative thereof of the one that's in the SLR McLaren. And it's this dichotomy between hardcore 4x4 and mega car performance, which I think is so amusing. Which brings me to the main point. At the heart of this car is a 4x4. It's got locking differentials, a ladder frame chassis, a very unaerodynamic and boxy sort of shape. So then, why is the G-Wagon so popular? Well, let's get in and find out. The story of the Mercedes G-Wagon starts back in the Middle East in the early 1970s when the King of Iran suggested Mercedes build a military vehicle suitable for his army. As he was a major shareholder of Mercedes-Benz, they got to work immediately and in a few years they produced the first G-Wagon. However, for the King, it was too little too late as he was overthrown and ran into exile in Egypt. Though he never enjoyed the benefit of his idea, everyone from armies around the world to popes and presidents have been using the G-Wagon, all favouring its adaptability functionality and reliability. But ever since roughly 2006, the G-Wagon has found favour with celebrities and the rich. So why is that? Well, back in 2005, Mercedes-Benz were considering killing the G-Wagon off altogether. It was just sheer luck that the US Marine Corps decided to buy 150 G-Wagons to replace their existing ageing fleet. So to celebrate the final order of G-Wagons, Mercedes introduced a range of special edition civilian versions. However, a few of those versions were bought by tuning houses and then were on sold to a select few high net worth individuals and celebrities. The G-Wagon was reborn as a fashion accessory. So Mercedes cancelled the plan to kill the G-Wagon and the rest they say is history. So what's the G-Wagon actually like as a car? Well, the G-Wagon has a lot of critics. For me, I absolutely love it. Yes, the seating position is a bit awkward and when you go around the corner, you're shuffling the wheel off and the ride is very, very choppy. But you know what? When a car looks as good as this, sounds as good as this, who cares? And speaking of the sound, every time I get into a Mercedes Benz with this five and a half litre supercharged V8, I'm reminded of how good this engine is. Everywhere in the rev range, the torque is just outrageous. And as soon as you sink your foot into the deep pile of carpet, you're pushed along in a hail of Gatling gun fire. It's mad. But the irony of the G-Wagon is not just contained to the engine. The interior is a sumptuous, handcrafted luxury box. I have heated and cooled multi-contour seats, climate control, rear entertainment, heated steering wheel, memory seats, Alcantara headlining, Napa leather, the list goes on and on. But there are still hints of ball drive DNA. Well, when I say hints, I mean giant flashing beacons of four-wheel driveness. I mean, down here I've got a very prominent button which says low and high for low and high range. I've got diff locking buttons, handles everywhere so you can hold on to when you're only a few degrees from rolling over onto the roof. But if we're going to be perfectly honest, anyone who has one of these, particularly an AMG version, is never going to use any of these features. But what these features do give you is a sense of freedom that you just don't get in a normal road car. You have the confidence that no matter what the situation, you can go there. So how do we summarise the G-Wagon? Well, it's very hard to. It's not a car you buy with your head, but you buy it because you love it. It is totally ridiculous in all the right ways. There is not one person in the world who actually needs a car like this but I guess that's why it's cool. Practicality isn't cool, but exclusivity and luxury is. That's the reason why the G55 AMG should be on your bucket list. We'll see you next time.
see you next week.